Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 38 of Truck History. On today's episode, we will be looking at the short-lived history of Republic Trucks. Now, let's get started. In 1911, Frank Ruggles founded the Alma Manufacturing Company in Alma, Michigan. However, truck production did not actually begin until the spring of 1913. Prior to truck production, the Alma Manufacturing Company produced a truck for the Cameron Car Company of Springfield, Massachusetts. This gave Ruggles time to re-engineer and refine his truck and prepare the company for production. Unfortunately, the Cameron Company went bankrupt and truck production at the Alma plant stopped. Frank Ruggles was determined and his workforce of 30 men was now familiar with truck production and the plant was already configured to build trucks. Frank Ruggles was ready. During this time, trucks were just becoming popular and these motorized delivery wagons were quickly replacing horse-drawn delivery wagons. Who could blame them? These trucks were more reliable than horses as these trucks didn't get sick, didn't need to be fed, were much faster and could move heavier loads. With this in mind, Ruggles determined that his truck would be affordable, that it would be well built, and that it would carry heavier loads than advertised. The first trucks came out of the Alma manufacturing plant in March of 1913. They were distributed by the Maxwell Motor Company under the Hercules label. Soon Ruggles reorganized the Alma manufacturing company into the Alma Motor Truck Company and the enterprise was underway. Within a few months, Ruggles changed the name of his truck from Hercules to Republic and soon after renamed the company, the Republic Motor Truck Company. To the surprise of everyone, orders began pouring in. Soon the company was overwhelmed by dealers' demands for trucks. The workforce quickly grew from the 30 men to 100, then to 200. Each truck was built by a crew, but Ruggles soon knew he needed a new operation method. The answer came from Henry Ford's assembly line. Ruggles knew that his company would never catch up with orders for hundreds of trucks without the assembly line. From 1913 to 1916, the factory underwent constant expansion with new assembly lines, new warehouses, new wood shops, new rail spurs, and a new paint shop. By 1916, the unthinkable had happened. Republic Truck had become the largest exclusive manufacturer of trucks in the world. Alma was flourishing. The company's executives and other investors were becoming wealthy. Visitors arrived by trains to tour Alma and the Republic plants. A company bus met them at the depot and public relations men gave them the grand tour and first class treatment. However, with the rapid growth of the Republic Motor Company came a host of problems. Alma was a small town of a few thousand residents. The explosive growth of the company soon demanded a workforce of 600, then a thousand. How could the company get enough workers in a rural town like Alma? They came from all over the surrounding area and even further. Where would they live? Every house and apartment in Alma and neighboring St. Louis was taken. The company begged anyone with a spare bedroom to open it to a Republic worker. Businessmen organized the company to buy land, subdivide, and begin building humble dwellings that Republic workers could afford. Even to this day, certain areas of Alma have many smaller homes that date from the construction boom of 1916 to 1920. Alma soon discovered its unpaved streets were inadequate as every truck went on a test drive through Alma. The city found its water and sewer systems inadequate to service the new subdivisions. The schools were so overcrowded, some classes met in churches. But the town was rich. Voters passed every bond issue requested for water and sewer systems, as well as for a new school, the Republic, that stands today. Republic trucks soon set the standard in the trucking industry. Every ninth truck in America was a Republic. Eventually, the company had an amazing network of dealers, service centers, and parts depots across the 48 states. It was the envy of other truck manufacturers. Soon, Republic trucks found their way across the water. Three quarters of all trucks in New Zealand were Republics. Australians were delighted with their Republic trucks. And even today, Republic trucks are treasured items in Australian museums. Republic trucks were sold and serviced in more than 50 countries. What did a person get when he purchased a Republic? He got the chassis, running system, and wheels. Then he chose the rest of the truck, which would be made to order. The company produced many models of typical steak rake trucks, but the variety of vehicles that came from the company's shops is almost mind-boggling. Panel trucks, paddy wagons, fire trucks, ambulances, buses of various descriptions, dump trucks, cement mixer trucks, road graders, wreckers, oil delivery trucks, the list goes on. Tokyo, Japan ran a fleet of Republic buses as did Baltimore, Maryland. 
The Maori chieftains in New Zealand hauled wool from the inland sheep ranches to the coast and carried goods back to the ranches using their tough Republic trucks. From the California oil fields to the forested mountains of the Northwest and into the mines of America, Republic trucks provided excellent performance. Perhaps Republic's proudest moment came during the Great War. Trucks were being used in the battlefields of France. Most were from European companies, some of which had been put out of business by the war. Truck mechanics struggled to keep inventories of parts for repairs. When the United States entered the war in 1917, the War Department declared that they would build a war truck. It would have only a few models, so parts would not be a problem. It would be called the Liberty Truck, and 30,000 would be needed. Republic Truck had just designed a new truck and had built a new assembly plant to produce it. This plant would later become the Lobdell Emery Manufacturing Company. Republic's plans for the new truck soon changed, for the company was awarded contracts to build several thousand Liberty trucks, and the new plant was devoted to production of the war truck. Infantrymen, nicknamed Sammies, came by train to Alma to take a training in how to drive and maintain the Liberty truck. In an age before power steering, power brakes, and automatic transmissions, it took tough men to manage these behemoths. Two men to a truck, they drove convoys of Liberty trucks from Alma to Baltimore, Maryland, where the trucks would be disassembled, boxed and loaded on ships, and sent to France, where they would be reassembled. The drivers went with them and drove the trucks on the battlefield. The war was soon over, and Republic had built several thousand Liberty trucks. After the war, the company's directors, now from New York and Cleveland, rather than Alma, decided that the company needed to expand. After all, the company now had a workforce of 2,000 and was prepared to assemble 30,000 trucks a year. To finance the expansions, the company issued 3 million in gold notes. This decision killed the Republic company. A post-war depression struck. The company that had anticipated building 30,000 trucks a year in 1921 built only 1,400. It could not pay its debt and went into receivership. Ruggles bailed out in 1920, taking his profits and moving to Saginaw, where he started the Ruggles Motor Truck Company. Within a few years, it failed, along with many truck companies of the time. Once the Republic Company faltered, it was abandoned by out-of-town investors and control reverted to local men. In spite of all their valiant efforts, the company continued its decline. By the mid-1920s, sales improved slightly, and 60 of Michigan's 80 counties were running Republic road graders. Still, the improvement was not enough to save the Republic Motor Truck Company. Eventually, the company was bought by American La France in 1929. The new La France Republic Company was absorbed by the Sterling Motor Truck Company in 1932, and Republic Trucks ceased to exist. This company was short-lived and battled through a lot of adversity, but in the end, it was just too much. So that is the end of Republic Truck history. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below. What did you think of Republic Trucks? Need new parts for your rig? Check out our website, jackschromeshop.com, as we have a wide variety of products. And if you can't find what you're looking for, give us a call, and we'll find what you need. If you want to stay up to date on new content coming your way, check out The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at noon, with our host, Dave Coleman. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.